CSS. Uh, we'll learn uh, different ways of importing CSS because there are a couple and the best practices around that. And we will, uh, at the end, we'll try to uh, make sure that we have an understanding of how HTML, CSS are used to create web pages and how, how these two uh, technologies basically communicate with each other. So let's start with the first one. Uh, the first one is HTML. Uh, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Uh, it is not a programming language. It is a markup language. Uh, it is mainly used to define the structure of your web page. Uh, so if you have, uh, I'm sure you have seen a lot of web pages, but uh, visually you can identify various elements in a web page. So there is a header, there is a footer, and there are uh, there is some text in your page. There are images, there are videos, um, a lot of different stuff. Uh, so basically all this can be uh, visualized in so all of this are different visual elements which you can uh, define in your HTML as different elements. So HTML basically works on the concept of elements. You use these elements to structure your whole web page, and these elements basically form parent-child relationship in the HTML. Uh, we we will have more clarity on this once we start with the exercise. Yeah, uh, conceptually, this is the thing in HTML that uh, we work with elements, and the elements are defined using tag names. And the way that we define tag names is, uh, this, is this is the general format for defining tag names. Uh, you have a tag name, uh, which can be any of these. Uh, there are a lot of tag names, but these are the most commonly used ones. You generally have a tag name uh, inside your Angular brackets. Uh, forget about attributes for now. You just have a tag name inside your uh, Angular brackets, and then you close the tag name uh, with, uh, in the same format. Uh, you just have a, uh, like a forward slash in front of it. That's how you close it. And there is some content. Uh, between your uh, opening and closing tags. And then there are attributes uh, which are used to modify the properties of your tag. Uh, we will see all this in uh, uh, in our exercise. But yeah, this is this is how you define a tag in HTML. So, uh, and these are the basic HTML tags, uh, title H1P, dev, span, image, and A. Uh, we will cover some of these. There, there are a lot of tags, but these are the most generally used ones. We will try to cover these in the exercise. Uh, so moving on to an exercise. So this exercise mainly is around HTML. We will have a similar exercise for uh, CSS, but let's try to cover HTML first. To start with this, you will need a text editor. You can use Notepad. You can use any sort of text editor. If you want a recommendation, you can go over to brackets. It is maintained. It is developed and maintained by Adobe. You can visit the link and the download and install should be pretty straightforward. Just click on the download and install it. Once you do that, you will be uh, given this sort of uh, interface, not exactly like this, but somewhat similar. Uh, what you need to do is you need to create a new file, name it whatever you want, but the extension should be HTML. And that's how, you def uh, that's how your browser knows that this is a HTML file. And we will start by, by creating the first tag. So uh, if you remember the syntax of the tag, we start it with uh, an angular brace, HTML, and you close uh, this tag. And it is auto-completing for me, but uh, this is how you uh, basically close the tag. So this is the starting of the tag, and this is the closing of the tag. And in your HTML file, uh, everything is wrapped inside your HTML tags. So we talked about how everything in uh, HTML is, uh, follows a parent child relationship. HTML is basically the outermost parent of all the elements. So every element inside your HTML will come inside the HTML tag. So this is the parent. And uh, visually speaking, this will do nothing right now. And uh, you will have to create two extra, uh, I mean, two, um, more, uh, two more tags, uh, namely body and head. And this is the, this is the standard. You, don't really have another option. This, this is how you follow it. Like uh, there is a head tag in your HTML and there is a body tag in your uh, HTML. Body, uh, let's start with body first and we'll move to head. A body basically contains all the content that you will see on your website. So we talked about different tags in this slide. I'll go back to that slide. We had a title, H1, P. Let's start with H1. H1 is used for uh, adding headings. So the syntax is the same. You start the tag and you close the tag and inside here, you will have some content. So let's say this is a heading. Uh, if you open it in a browser, your browser uh, by default knows how to handle HTML files. 
in order to open this in a browser, you can either just pick it up and like move it in your browser and it will open up. It is friendly that way, or you can just copy the path, open a new tab, paste the path and go to that file. And as you can see, you can see this, uh, this is a heading and it is styled accordingly. Uh, this is bold uh, because your browser knows that since this is the H1 tag, I have to add these styles uh, to this particular element. If I remove this, it is just a simple text and it will have no styling. Uh, it is through this tag that we are saying the styles applied to uh, the particular element because your browser knows how to handle HTML files. Uh, and just a quick, uh, like, uh, if you want to inspect what tag this is, you can right click on it and click on inspect. Most of the browsers have this uh, debugging tool where you can go to elements tab and you can view your complete HTML file. So inside the elements, you can easily see everything. And you can actually, you can do anything here. You can modify this content. You can even delete this. And once you refresh this comes back again. So this is uh, really helpful when you're debugging your HTML or CSS. You can even see CSS over here. Uh, a couple of other tags. Uh, there are H2, H3 through H6. All of these are basically your heading tags. H1 is the biggest heading and H6 is the smallest heading. So if I say this is also a heading, this should also be a heading, but this should be a lot smaller because this is H6. And if you go somewhere in between, this is also a heading. This will also be a heading, but uh, it will be between H1 and H6. So these are, this is one type of tag and it has six variations. Uh, this is called a heading tag. And let's talk about some other tag. Uh, so let's talk about P. P is used for uh, creating your paragraphs. The structure basically stays the same. You create an opening tag, you create a closing tag. In between, you will have some content. This is the paragraph. And you will notice that visually there is nothing, uh, but yeah, this is how you enclose a paragraph inside your tags. This represents a paragraph. Uh, moving on to another type of tag, there is a image tag, which is represented using IMG, IMG. And this doesn't really require a closing tag. And you can see that if I try to close it, it close the pod, closes the body because that is the one matching on the above. But yeah, let's try to close it for now because we stated that uh, the rule that if you open it, we try to close it. Let's just follow that. And I'll explain why we don't really need to close this. So image tag doesn't really need a content in here. You don't have to add a content. The purpose of your image tag is to apply an image. So let's try to find some image. Uh, the purpose of uh, this image tag is to basically find an image and apply it. So we don't really need a content in here. The, the uh, content base, you cannot add anything. You really need a source for that image. And that's how you can apply it. I'll, I'll just show it once I have a URL with me. So let's say this is the image that I want to show on my page. I just need the URL of this image. And uh, the way you apply it is using the attribute tag. So uh, if you remember, I mentioned here that we have a tag name, we close the tag name, and there is some content, which is optional, which is not always required. And there are also attributes. For image tag, these attributes are what is important. And this is the way that you define your your, uh, your source. Uh, so you add a source, tag, uh, source attribute and you set its value to whatever you are you have. So if I do this and I refresh my page, uh, page I will see uh, the image here. And it actually goes to this URL, downloads it, and then inserts it into my HTML. And this is the reason why we don't really need this closing tag, because closing tag is required to distinguish between the content and the opening tag. So if I have an opening tag and a closing tag, anything in between is the content, and that is what is being styled. Uh, if we don't have any content, we can skip this. We don't really need this because. Yeah. Sorry, we have a question. How do you add an image that is on your computer? Do you just copy and paste the path? Uh, it basically stays the same. Uh, so let's say I have this image confetti and I want to add this image instead of this cat image. What I will do is I will follow a relative path. And the way relative path works is 
wherever your HTML file exists, you have to uh, sort of navigate from there to the path of the image. So uh, right now in my current directory, I have app folder and inside that app folder, I have converted a PNG, right? So this is how I will apply the image. Dot slash means my current directory. So this directory, the workshop directory and app is the folder and then slash config PNG is the name of this. So if you have a, a local image, this is how you can refer to, or you could just move this image outside and just say config PNG, which would, which would essentially mean that uh, locate this image in the same directory, but we don't have any image in this directory. So we have to navigate to that part. So yeah, uh, this is the image tag and you don't need a closing image tag because there is no content in it. Another property, another attribute for this uh, image tag is ALT. And it is used when the image cannot be loaded. So let's say uh, this image is somewhere on my server. I am maintaining the image and uh, I am no longer be able to like host the server and the image goes that uh, I cannot access the image because my server is down. So I, I will simulate that by using a, some random string inside here so that image cannot be located. If you, if in this case, I try to load my image, uh, I will see this broken image. It should show a broken image. Uh, basically you won't be able to see the image. And in that case, what you can do is you can add ALT and add some text here. And you will see cat was here if the image cannot be loaded. And uh, this is a nice user experience. Uh, if the image cannot be loaded, you can add a description for that. Uh, this text won't be shown if uh, we can actually uh, see the image. So these are some basic elements. Uh, next are two of the most important elements and uh, which are namely div and span. So uh, as I mentioned in most of the websites, uh, they follow a particular structure. You have a header at the starting, you have a lift, uh, sort of a lift navigation, you can have a footer. So all of these things are uh, like divided into sections. And the way that you do, do that, you have two options. You can either use divs or you can use spans. So divs and spans, the purpose of divs and spans is to create various sections, uh, segregate various sections of your website. And everything we saw up until now, we can use uh, divs to do that. So this is a div. This is the general format that they follow. We create an opening tag, we create a closing tag, a tag and we create a content in it. We add a content in it. If I have two of these, I will see two of these, but do note that they, by default, divs take full width. So if you have two divs, uh, they will come in uh, next to another. Uh, I mean, they'll, they'll come in a different line. They'll not be stacked together because uh, this is the default behavior, which we can change using CSS, but for now, uh, this is the difference between them. Um, the difference between span and div is that they uh, are much more friendly and they will come in line. So if I have two spans, they will come in line. They only take the space that they need and they are friendly in that way. They'll, they'll allow another span to come uh, right next to it. And you can basically create a whole website using only a div uh, you won't even need to use your P tags or image tags. Uh, in the third exercise, we will actually do this. But for now, this this is just another tag that you should know. Uh, and this is basically used to segregate your uh, website into various sections. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the basic elements in HTML. Uh, so in structure, of, okay, we have to sort of talk about the head tag. Just me. I think. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth has some question. Uh, she was doing the exercise okay. around with you. Uh, Elizabeth, would you okay. like to unmute yourself and ask the question or maybe share your screen so that we can help you with that? Uh, I can just ask it. So basically I have a, I was just trying to load an image that's already um, like saved in like my, on like my uh, hard drive and it's not saved in the same folder, but I was wondering if you can just provide the full path to the image and load it that way. Like I know, I've done Python coding and you, and if, you know, whatever script or whatever uh, you're trying to load, if it's not in the same folder as your script, you can just provide the full path and it will still work correctly. Uh, are you like, providing the correct path? 
path because I think that should work. If you provide the path from root, that should work. Okay, do you still have to change the, the forward slashes to back slashes? Uh, I don't think that should be a problem. Okay. Uh, if like we'll try to like cover a little bit more and then maybe we'll get back to you to resolve your issue. Okay, that works. Yeah. Okay, so we didn't really cover head tag. So body tag. Uh, so inside the body tags, uh, we just saw that anything that we write inside the body tag is the content is the main part of your website, and it's displayed here. Uh, the head tag is a bit different. Uh, it contains the meta information. The body contains your information and the head tag contains your meta information. So uh, things related to so like say title. So if I say welcome, uh, you can notice that currently the title of my web page is play.html, which is the file name. But if I want to make it a bit friendlier, I can set a title of my web page and you will see that there is nothing in the web page, but the title is now set to welcome. So that is the meta information. That is not really something that the user will see in the website, but it is good for the health of the website. Uh, and uh, some other parts where, uh, that uh, head is used for is uh, for adding your style sheets. So you use, use this link property to add your style sheets. Uh, we'll cover this later, but just know that uh, to add various style sheets like CSS or JavaScript, we use the head tag. Uh, we can yeah, we use the head tag and uh, there are some other things for which head is used, uh, namely search engine optimization. For example, if you go on Google and search for something and you see your website on top, uh, that is because of search engine optimization. Uh, Google, uh, the search engines like Google, they scrape your websites and search inside your head tags for description. So you can have a meta description tag here and uh, search engines basically use this tag to figure out what this website does and use that to provide search results. And one other use case is unfurling, which is the process of creating preview from your website. So if you have shared your website with your friends on WhatsApp or Facebook, you might have seen a little preview of your website. Uh, that thing you can control using the hit tags. So that is all the meta information that is not directly visible inside the website, but it is good for the health of the website. So just going over everything, structure of HTML. Uh, we enclose everything in HTML tag. It is called the root element because it is the parent of every other element. Uh, inside the root element, we have our head and we have the body. Body contains these uh, actual visible content. Head tags usually contain the meta information about the website. It contains the links to external resources, which can be your style sheets, your JavaScript, anything. Uh, it can also include your favicons, which are these icons that appear on top of your website. We don't really have one, so this is the default one. Uh, but yeah, that, that is also included in the head tag. Uh, it is also used for SEO and unfolding. You can read more about unfolding. I have a link here. Okay, let's move on to CSS. Uh, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it is a style, uh, it is a style sheet language. It is used, uh, so basically we created uh, a div here and there was some content in it. If I want to make that div such that it looks like a paragraph or it looks like a heading or it looks like a button, I will have to add styles to it. And the way that I do it is using uh, CSS. And there are actually multiple ways to add CSS, uh, namely inline, internal, and external. We will cover this these three types in uh, our exercise. Uh, but uh, Let's go over the basic prop how, how we define a CSS property. So you have a selector uh, which identifies the element that you're trying to apply the style on. And in, in this, is, uh, this is a general, like uh, this is how you do it. You add a selector uh, at the top and then you have curly braces and inside the curly braces, you list on all the properties. So this will be a property name and this will be a property value. And you can have a list of these. So you can have three or four values or five or six, how, how, however many you want. So this is how we add a CSS rule. Uh, let's go over to our exercise and let's, let's try to uh, cover the first one. Let's try to do the inline styling. So if I create a div here, this is a div. And uh, if I try to render it, this is basically just uh, saying this is a div. There is no style attached to it. Let's say, uh, let's say that I want uh, it to have a background of black. 
and the color of white. The way that I can do it in an inline fashion is by adding a style attribute to it. This is just a normal attribute that we can add equals and in its value, I can add any style I want. Uh, the way that I'll do it is by saying color white or color white, yeah, color white, and then background black. Uh, property name, property value, property name, property value, and they are separated by a comma. Uh, this is the format that we follow for inline, but it is a bit different for internal and external side, side sheets. And this this type of like styles, do, do, we don't really use them, but um, it's it's good to know that we have uh, inline styles as well. So this is how it will look inside the browser. If you click on this, you can see on the right side that these properties are actually added to this element. So if I click on body, we can see the styles and body. There are none because we added uh, no styles. If you click on this, we can see these styles and I can switch off or switch on these values to sort of uh, modify them and then use as I like. So if I don't want it to be white, I can choose any other, other value, copy all this and then paste it here. Uh, this is basically in my styling and this is not widely used. The reason is that Let's say uh, this is how I want my brand button to be. So I have a website and it contains button in 10 places. And this is how I am styling it. What I'll have to do is I'll have to copy this 10 times and wherever I have a button, I'll have to copy all the style again and again. And this, so this basically includes uh, more uh, chances of error. I, if I throw up at one place, uh, it will take me a lot of time to figure out which button and which style I missed up. So this is not really a good way to do it. And I'm also repeating myself a lot. So yeah, this, this is called inline styling and we don't really use it a lot. The other way is internal style sheet. We revert back to the uh, first version uh, without any size. What we can do, uh, what we do in internal styles is we inside the head, we create a style tag. So now style tag is a child of our head. And inside here, we can add any property we like. So color white, background black. Now this is more in sync with what we had here. We have curly braces and we have property values and names, property names and values. But uh, by doing this, we by default need a selector because in the style sheet, we don't know which element to apply the style on. So we have to provide a selector. The way selectors work is that uh, selectors are basically used to identify the element in your uh, in your HTML file. So if I have two divisions here and one span here, I want to apply uh, this style to all my divisions. I need to identify all the divisions, and the way that I can do there are there are basically multiple ways to do that. But the first one is by using the tag name. So in this case, the tag name is div. I can just paste div here, and this should apply the style to all the divisions here. So we should see three divs with background back, uh, back and color white. So this is in internal size. And similarly, we can do it for span. Uh, this is a bit better uh, in the way that uh, now I can, uh, I have separated concerns. Uh, there is separation of concerns. If I want to debug some style related issue, I can directly go into my style uh, tags and look for the for, uh, actual style that I've messed up. I don't have to go into my body tag and look for the particular element where the style is messed up. And there is uh, a lot less repetition. I'm not repeating this again and again. So if I have a brand button on my website at 10 places, I only need to define the style once and I can uh, put in the correct selector for that. But uh, this uh, the, the third way is external style sheets and that is the one that is most widely used. So in that, what you do is you separate out your CSS file completely. Uh, you create a new file. Uh, let's name it player.css. Uh, I'm just making it in the same directory as my HTML file. Okay. Okay. 
So we have a file name play.css in the same directory as our play.html. What we do is we just copy all of this and we move everything to a different file. And we don't need these tiles anymore. What we can do is we can use the link tags. And the way link tags work is, uh, it is similar to what we saw previously. It is just a tag. You don't really need to close because it doesn't have a content. It only requires a free, uh, like a source uh, where your file exists. So the first uh, attribute that you want to uh, you would uh, give it is the relationship of the resource to this file. So for this file, uh, the resource that we are referring to is a style sheet. So we add a style sheet here, style sheet, and the source is uh, the path where our file exists. So in our case, it is at player.css. And okay, it is not a This one, it's href, it's not src. For, for link tags, it is href, and for uh, your link tags or image tags, it is src. And you should see basically no difference here because we have not really done anything. We have just moved our CSS to a different file. Okay. Uh, now, why is this better? Uh, this is the so this is the actual, actually the standard way of doing things and why is this better because now let's say in my uh, HTML file I have a header section here this this is a part of a header this is a part of a footer and this is a part of some sidebar what I can do is I can create a header dot CSS I can create a footer dot CSS and I can have separate styles in all of my files and if there is a bug or an issue in my header, I only need to go to header.css and fix that issue. I don't really need to look into all of this or any other CSS files. Just we we have so, a small question. Yeah. Link tag doesn't have the same end like this with the slash type requirement. I can see you're embedding it inside the brackets instead of. Yeah. I was just wondering what how did what makes it different that way? Is that just a what makes link different than title that way? Because it's a function more? No, uh, so uh, as we discussed, like uh, even if you looked at the image tag, you don't really need to close the image tag. Uh, that is because image tag doesn't really have a content in it. Why we need a closing tag is because there is a content. Generally, there is a content which we need to style. If there is a content, we need to close it so that the browser knows that uh, this is the content inside of these two elements. If there is no content, we don't really need a closing tag. Okay, okay. So for image, we don't need a closing tag. And similarly for link, we don't really need a closing tag because there is no content. Gotcha, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, for you, title, there is a content. Yeah, you can search more about paired and unpaired tags. Uh, some tags do not need to be closed because they just do not have, uh, we don't need to specify an ending for them. So you can search more yeah. about paired and unpaired tags. I see. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this is the general way that we add CSS to our files. We uh, create a different uh, style sheet and we attach the link to it inside our HTML. And that is the way to go for uh, adding CSS. Uh, next, we should really move to selectors. Uh, uh, we have already seen one type of selectors, which is the tag name. So what we are doing here is uh, we are referring to our elements by their tag name. Uh, this works for now, but it won't work in long run because let's say that I want to, uh, so I have, I don't have a span. I have all this and this div needs to be some text content and these two need to be a button. How do I style these two differently? There is no way that I can differ between these versus the, uh, this particular div. So for that, we have two uh, ways to dif uh, differentiate, uh, to basically identify these elements. Uh, these are namely ID and class. So ID stands for identifier, and it, it should be ideally used only for one element. So one ID should be assigned to one element. So if I say, uh, if I add, so this is an attribute, and you add it. Uh, the similar way that you add other attributes. You define the uh, attribute name and the attribute value. So in this case, I'll say attribute equals text, ID equals text, and ID equals button. 
Now what I can do is I can uniquely identify both of these elements in my CSS. And the way that I do that is, uh, I will get rid of this. I'll use these names. So these are the identifiers now. I say text. And since this is an ID and not just a tag name to differentiate, uh, so by saying uh, text, it will look up for a tag name that is text. And we don't really have tag name text. To identify that this is actually an ID, what we do is we put found symbol in front of it. So we use found symbol for IDs. So this means that uh, in your HTML document, find the element that has the uh, ID text. So it will uniquely identify this particular div. And now we can basically add any style uh, this, uh, in the similar way that we did earlier. So now only this division is in particular uh, colored maroon and uh, the rest are unsigned. And similarly, we can do it for button. You won't be able to see it because the background is white. But yeah, we changed the color of this to white. Uh, now, the second thing is class. IDs uniquely identify your elements, but classes are used to group similar sort of styles. So let's say uh, I want, I don't want a particular element uh, by the ID button. I want a group. I want to create a group of styles. Uh, let's say I, I can have 10 different buttons on micro, but these are my brand buttons and these need to have the same size. So in that case, I won't use ID, I'll use class because I want to group similar sort of style. So I change this to class and in my CSS, I'll change this to dot. Uh, this is the difference between ID and class. Uh, ID is uh, we notify, uh, so we signify ID using pound symbol and we signify uh, signify the class using dot. So dot button means uh, look for the elements that have a class name button. Uh, the difference between class and ID is that ID should only be applied to a particular element. So if I have one ID, uh, it should be mapped to one element inside my whole HTML. There shouldn't be duplicates around that. And class can be used multiple times. I can have 10 different elements with the same class. It, uh, the purpose of class is to sort of combine size and apply it to a bunch of different elements. So now you will see that both of these elements have turned white. So this is the concept of selectors. Uh, we saw a tag name, uh, which was simply the name of the tag that we were using. We saw ID selectors, and then we saw the class name selectors. There is one other selector that I want to mention, and that is a universal selector. This basically selects everything in your document. So if I get rid of all this, uh, but this is basically commenting out everything. This basically means that I am deleting this. Uh, universal selector selects everything inside the HTML document. So if I say color white, everything or uh, everything inside my HTML document now will have color white and you will not be able to see anything. That is a universal selector. It selects everything inside your HTML. Does anyone have any questions so far? Do you want us to pause? Okay, I think nobody has any questions. Okay. So the concept of selectors, as we discussed, there is a universal selector, which selects everything. We can select by tag name, which is simply just adding the whatever the tag is, but it is not very useful because we can have similar tags, but we still might want to distinguish between those tags. So for example, in this case, we want to style this differently and these two group uh, differently. We have ID to uniquely identify a particular element in HTML. We have class, which is used for grouping to create a group of particular elements and style them together. And the general rule of selectors is that the more specific you get, the higher is the priority of the style group. What that means is, uh, if a particular style, so in my in my CSS, I can uh, refer to this div in multiple ways. I can use a uh, I can use a tag name. This style, if I if I add, uh, if I add any style in here, uh, that style will apply to this because this is a div. If I use ID here, this will also apply to this div because this div has an ID. So there are multiple ways to reach the same element. This and this basically reaches the same element. 
but what, uh, if I if I let's say if I try to set a color of maroon here and a color of green here, which rule should apply in this case? Because this uh, this particular style group says that the color should be maroon for this div, and this particular uh, uh, this particular style group says the color should be green. So we are trying to apply two styles to the same element. Which one will work in this case? So we'll see that for the first one, uh, it is green, and for the rest one, it is maroon. And the reason for this is that IDs are more specific. If I say that uh, pick all the divs and apply the color maroon to them, it is a more uh, wider group. But IDs can uniquely identify. I'm sure that one ID corresponds to one element. So that is by default a more narrow down, uh, narrow, narrowed uh, style group. So that will have more priority on my in my CSS. Uh, it is just like saying enter, uh, when you enter a class, you say that everyone in the class should stand up and uh, the people with their name starting with J's uh, can sit down. The state of the class will be that everyone will be standing up and the people whose name starts with J will be sitting down because you have actually created a different group, which is a more narrow group, and you have applied a different style to it. So the more narrow you get on your selectors, the higher is the priority. Uh, even now, if I want to override this, I can add a custom like inline style to it. If I add a style uh, this way, this is what will be applied to this element because this is even narrower because I'm particularly going to this element and applying the style. So the more uh, specific that you can get, uh, the better is the, the higher is the uh, probability that, uh, not the probability, the priority of that style. So uh, are there any questions around that? So we will move on to the box model. Uh, the box model states, uh, so let's get rid of all of this and see uh, this particular div. If you see this, if, uh, if you hover on it, uh, you will see that uh, this sort of forms a box in on the screen. There is content in it. And uh, if you see the blue outline, uh, the sort of the blue rectangle, it forms a box. If I want to add border to it, I can use the border property on it. So I can say border when P is solid. Black. This is the way uh, that you can add border. You can look it up. This is basically the uh, it follows the same format, but this is how you add a border to it. Uh, once you do it, you'll see a border around it. If I want to add space between my content and my border, I can use padding. So I can say 40 pH. And you'll notice that the content and the border now has space between them. If I want my element to have space around it outside the border, then for that we use margin. So this is what the box model says that at the center you have your content. So in this case we have this is a div as the content at the center. There is a border uh, outside the content, which is this. And if you want to create a space between your content and your border, you use the word padding. So padding is the space between your content and the border. And if outside the border, between different elements, if you want to have spacing, for that, you use margin. So if I have two, uh, two spans, uh, two divisions that are lying uh, one next to each other, and I want to create space between them, I'll use margin, because that is outside that element. And if I want to create some space between the, uh, the content and the border of the element, then I'll use the word padding. Yeah, this is what box model states. Uh, I don't think uh, we, so next we have the exercise uh, for creating a whole web page using HTML CSS, but I don't think we have the time for that. Should, should I continue with that or uh, should we take questions? I if think we can take some questions. Yeah. If you have any doubt or if you felt stuck at any point, you can just go ahead and mute yourself, share the screen and we can help you debug your problem. Mm -hmm. This would be a nice opportunity to like not shy and uh, like share your screen so that we can help you. And this, I think this session will get you started at least. That is what is the most important thing, having the confidence and getting started.
Did you share the link to this um, <clears throat> this PowerPoint or this uh, Google? Yeah, I, I, I share that. We can share that um, at the end or, yeah. Okay. Okay, then I think uh, we don't have any questions. I'll Are you? Okay, so, okay. <laughs> I can I can start with the uh, resources that you can follow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I know there was a lot of like uh, selectors in uh, not not the selectors. There were a lot of properties in uh, CSS like this border and the way that this border is used, padding, why is there a px in front of it, margin, why is there a px in front of it. These are all the values of these properties and this is the way that it is used. Uh, the purpose of this work uh, workshop was to sort of get, uh, the head, uh, get your head around how HTML renders in your page and how you sort of use the different ways of using CSS in your uh, HTML and the best ways around that. So we saw three ways. Uh, inline, internal, and external. What is the advantage and disadvantage of it? That that was the purpose of it. You can always, uh, if you if you now if uh, after this workshop, if you create your own uh, web page, you will obviously come across these issues where you want to add a border around your limits, and obviously you will Google it and you will find the values and you will learn that. Uh, this was that was not the purpose of this workshop. Uh, it was not to me memorize all of these values. These things you can easily Google and learn that way. Uh, in order to learn these things, you can, uh, so the first two links are basically the Mozilla, uh, developer.mozilla.org. These, this is maintained by the people at Mozilla. So it is a really trustworthy source. And uh, whenever I have some problem, I basically Google it. And if, uh, if I see a URL that mentions this, I directly go to this link because I can, I, I know I can trust this. And the information here is of uh, good quality. So. If you have any issues, you can always go to this website. You can even go to this website and start learning from here. You can pick on HTML basics and follow from here. Uh, you can see this is pretty much, it starts from the basic and uh, you can see where it goes. So this is a good uh, link to follow for HTML and CSS. There is this website called uh, Free Code Camp. This is where I started when, not started, but this is something that I used in my university days. You can go to the curriculum and uh, this basically shows you a path that you can follow. You can start with this responsive web design and the first exercises will be uh, sort of very easy exercise, introduction to basic HTML and HTML5. Say hello to HTML elements and you can follow this. Uh, I think it is an increasing difficulty, so it should be easy to follow. And I think the community uh, that they have built is also great. So you can follow this website to complete the project. It, uh, and by the way, if you complete all of these, uh, in the end, you will have a good portfolio. So these are sort of mini projects that you can show to the tutors or anyone. So this is something that you can look into. Uh, apart from this, Code Academy is what I started with when I uh, was in my university. At that time, there was a pricing model around this, but now they have a pricing model, but HTML and CSS course is still free. So uh, this will give you an interactive, uh, uh, this will give you an interactive, um, uh, this is a, basically it will be an interactive session where, where you will be presented with a problem. You will code the solution and it will check uh, the solution and then you will move on to the next challenge. And uh, it is of increasing difficulty and at the end you will learn a lot about HTML and CSS. So I'll also recommend this one. All of these links are in the site and I'll sorry, like show you the uh, link to the site. Codepin.io is for creating your fiddles, you can, if you don't want to like go and create a HTML file, create a CSS file, add the link to CSS in your HTML and then open it in your browser, you can directly go to code pen. You can write any HTML, CSS, for now you can just move JS, you can minimize the JS window and you can just code HTML, CSS and you can see the result here. And in the end, it will give you the link to your, uh, a shareable link to your work. And that is what I've added. So the last exercise was supposed to be this. I've added the link. You can feel free to go through the code, uh, like fiddle around it and uh, change the properties and see what happens. So yeah, this is a good website. 
Awesome. Thank you uh, so much, Jasmeet. I think that was a wonderful session. Uh, I think it was a quick recap of like uh, everything that you need to know to get started with HTML CSS. Uh, to reiterate on the fact that Jasmeet mentioned that it is, the session was meant to uh, help you kickstart your you know coding uh, with HTML CSS, and you can definitely try out the exercise that he mentioned to see instant results. So when you start seeing the results, it will build up more confidence. Um, I would like to thank you once again, Jasmeet, for taking out the time and like uh, preparing the content and like uh, giving this workshop. Um, if you don't have any questions, I think um, we can go ahead. Yeah, Paramita. Last call for questions, everyone. <laughs> if anybody has any questions or any clarifications, please ask. Any resource, any link, even if you have something that is yet to be cleared, you can email us. That is, of course, an option, but we would love for you to ask something if there's anything. Okay, I guess we don't have any questions. Just meet any last tips uh, you want to give before we wrap up. Uh, can you share the uh, link to the slides because it contains all the resources? Yeah, we we, we have to. We uh, have send... What? Do you have the link uh, to the slides? I I have the slide deck, yeah, and I'll email it to yeah. everybody uh, uh, on the on the registration list. So okay. we'll do that right now after the after we hang up. Okay. Okay, um, I guess uh, we'll end it here now before you all leave. Uh, please, please uh, fill the, um, the feedback form. Uh, I'll share the link with you. This will help us improve our events in the future. So it would be very nice if you could fill it honestly, give us honest feedbacks so that we can improve for our next events and we can like deliver the best content that you always want. The link is in the chat, and also if you can, if you want, you can scan the barcode and uh, fill out the form. And, and also, don't forget to uh, join our mailing list, follow our Instagram and Facebook group, as well as join our group chat in on GroupMe. And all the links are also in the chat. So thank you guys for Amazing. coming to the event and thank you to Justin. Thanks, thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everyone. Have a great weekend, yeah.